Kelly, and I am a nutritionist and a yoga teacher, and I'm here to talk to you every week about nutrition topics. So welcome to the show. This week, we are talking all about the bay leaf. This is, we're going to be making some exciting things with this. So this week, we're going to talk bay leaf, we're going to talk history, we're going to talk health information. We're going to talk about all the different kinds of bay leaves there are because there are many. And we are also going to make a recipe for bay leaf tea, which I did not know that there was a bay leaf tea. So that's pretty cool. And if you have any questions or comments, please put them in the chat. I love having conversations during the show. So welcome. I also forgot to mention in addition to being a nutritionist and yoga teacher, I'm also author of the smoothie book. So check it out. We sell it on relish.com in the cookbook section. So check it out. All right, everybody. What is a bay leaf? Let's talk about that. What is a bay leaf? Here, one more time. I think we're all probably familiar with the bay leaf. I found out there are a lot of different kinds of bay leaves out there when doing research. Okay. So what is a bay leaf? A bay leaf is a leaf, also called a laurel leaf, from the uh, sweet bay tree, which is an evergreen tree in the Lauraceae family. And it originated, excuse me, it originated in countries around the Mediterranean region and also grows well in warm, dry climates. So there you go. That explains the whole Mediterranean region. Uh, okay, so generally the bay leaf refers to the laurel leaf, but a lot of people call a lot of things bay leaves. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Um, but it's a small leaf from the sweet bay leaf tree, and the scientific name is Laurus nobilis. The bay leaf is also called the Turkish bay leaf because the originally it was grown in Turkey in that Mediterranean region. It's, uh, yes, but also in other countries around the Mediterranean. So we'll talk about that as well. So history, there's a long history of the bay leaf being used in Greek and Roman history. It was an ornamental symbol of honor and success and worn by Roman and Greek emperors, Olympians, scholars, heroes, and poets. Uh, then I thought this was really interesting. I learned in my research that two terms were created out of the um, root of the word laurel or uh, bay leaf and baccalaureate which is a term used uh, to talk about everybody who receives a bachelor's degree. And it means berries of laurel, which is a, you know, a plant of honor. And a poet laureate is somebody that has, that the government has given this special title to that has written poems for special events. So that's pretty cool that it was based off of the bay leaf, the laurel tree, all this honor and um, reward from all of that. So that was pretty cool. All right, so what else? Oh, bay leaves contain about 2% essential oil. So the oil is used in things like perfumes and medicinally, we'll talk about that a little bit later as well. The dried leaves are usually used whole when they're cooked. They're usually cooked in like soups and stews, things that they can boil and simmer in. And then you easily, so that you can easily take the leaf out because we don't want to eat the leaf. It just gives us a nice flavor for our cooking. Uh, you can also find it in powdered form. I was shopping for bay leaves this week and saw that it came in like a, a dried form. It wasn't powdered, but it looked like it had just been like kind of crushed, almost like tea. So I thought that was interesting. I didn't know you could buy it like that. Uh, so lots of different flavors with the bay leaf. Some say it has a floral scent and, and flavor. Some say it has an herbal scent and flavor. Uh, some people say it tastes like oregano or thyme. Um, but definitely one of the most used herbs in a lot of different cuisines. We'll talk about the different cuisines as well. Um, so 
they say that, you know, it tastes different when it's fresh versus dried, much more intense when it's dried, kind of like dried fruit. That flavor is way more intense in a dried fruit than a fresh fruit. And myrcene is a compound in the essential oils of the bay leaf, and that's used for perfumes, like we said, um, and other things for the scent. So I thought that was pretty interesting. I did not know that. Okay, so what are some other uses of the bay leaf and the cuisines that it is used in? So bay leaves are great for flavoring soups and stews, stocks, broths, things like that. Also great for stuffing in the cavity of a chicken. I did not know that. And um, before you roast a chicken. And also it can be used in the liquid for cooking rice. But then you just always have to remember to take it out so you don't eat it. Uh, in Indian, Indian cuisine, it's often used in recipes with rice as well, like biryani, which is just a really good layered rice dish. You can put meat, onions, lots of herbs and spices. So good. I have a friend that is from India, and she had me over once and made this for me, and it was so good. So, so good. Uh, also, it is an ingredient in garam masala, which is another Indian spice blend, ground up together with other spices. In the Philippines, it's also used in many dishes, um, and also European cuisine, especially Mediterranean food, it's used there. We use it here in the Americas, largely in soups and stocks and things like that. And also it's found in French and Italian dishes. So the leaves are most often used whole, like we were talking about. Sometimes, uh, sometimes they are ground up a little bit and put in a, a little uh, sachet and so that you know where they are at the end and you just pull that out um, because it could be abrasive to our digestive system because it's kind of sharp so good to remove them um, Thai and Laotian food also cuisines also use bay leaves and there are a few Arab influenced dishes like curries what is it called masaman curry that the bay leaf is in so so many different cuisines. Uh, oh, and also used in jerk chicken in the Caribbean dishes. So this is what I read, that the bay leaves are soaked and placed on the cool side of a grill, and then the pimento sticks are placed on top of the leaves, and the chicken is placed on top of that and smoked. So it's getting that nice, nice smoked flavor given to the chicken through smoking, of course, and the bay leaf. Uh, they're also added in soup stews and other dishes in the Caribbean. And they can also be crushed or ground for cooking. We said that already. Um, so the crushed leaves give more of a flavor because you're releasing those oils. So just keep that in mind. But they are more difficult to remove. So if you do want to crush them, put them in one of those sachets uh, or a muslin bag or a tea infused or something like that so you know where it is and you can remove it pretty easily. Uh, so ground loyal, bay loyal can also be substituted for whole leaves. Just be sure you don't use as much. And they, oh, and I read this too, that uh, bay leaves can be a bug repellent. So sometimes people have scattered them in their pantries for that reason. Interesting. Okay. So, what are the different varieties of bay leaves? After that, we're gonna get some water boiling for the tea, so that's the steep for a while. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six different varieties that I read about. So there's the Turkish bay leaf, which is the most common variety. So I'm guessing, I looked at the container, it didn't say what kind of bay leaf this was, but I'm guessing it was the Turkish. Um, and it's more has a more subtle flavor than other varieties, and it has a short, flat leaf. I'd say this is pretty flat, and uh, usually found in the dried version in the U.S. Then there's the California bay leaf, which is more potent and more has more of a minty flavor, thinner, longer, and often sold 
fresh, which I don't, I've never bought a fresh bay leaf, but I would be interested in learning more about that. Uh, okay, and then there's the Indian bay leaf, which our recipe calls for Indian bay leaf today. I could not find Indian bay leaf, so we're using the Turkish. We'll see how it goes. Uh, bay, Indian bay leaves are short and light and medium colored green, like a medium green. And they have a large vein down the length of the leaf. And they're about twice. Oh, hello. hey, Claudia. Thanks for tuning in. <laughs> um, let's see. Indian bay leaves have, uh, are about twice as long and wider than other bay leaves. And they're usually green. Um, and they have a fragrance similar to cinnamon, but they're milder than cinnamon. So I thought today, since we don't have the Indian bay leaf, we're going to add cinnamon so we get that same feel. Okay, then there's the Indonesian bay leaf. Not as common, not very common to find outside of Indonesia, only mostly found in Indonesia. And then there's a Mexican bay leaf and a West Indian bay leaf. Um, this West Indian bay leaf is often used in the Caribbean dishes, and it produces, oh, and it's also used to produce things like rum, bay rum, um, or it produces a cologne called bay rum, so I guess not rum, but maybe. Okay, let's talk, oh, let's get the water boiling next. Okay, so this recipe is called West Indian bay leaf tea. You can find it on relish.com. And super simple, but I thought the you know the weather's getting a little chillier. It's cold in our house. I actually turned our heat on today, so we're getting cold. And um, so I thought tea would be a great recipe for today. And super simple. If you have a bay leaf at home, a cinnamon stick, water, it's all you need. Okay, so we are going to boil two cups of water. This is my favorite hot pan my parents gave it to me. It was theirs and I've had it ever since I went to college so I've had it for quite a while. Okay so we're gonna put that on boil. I'm gonna set the timer for four minutes because at our house it really I've found that if I put liquid in this pot it boils in four minutes. So love it. Okay while that's boiling, we will talk about the health benefits of the bay leaf and all versions of bay leaf. Okay, I have nine health benefits to tell you. Okay, health benefit number one. Bay leaves have antibacterial properties. That's a good thing. They've been found to inhibit the growth of staph, like the kind of, you know, um, the bacteria in staph infections, and also E. coli. And there have been a few studies where they found that it could also inhibit the growth of H. pylori, which is a bacteria you can maybe get in your stomach that produces ulcers. So that would be a good thing to be able to get rid of that. Okay, making sure that the stove is on. Okay, number two. Bay leaves may help us regulate our blood sugar. So there was a study done where people with diabetes were given ground bay leaves. And they found that after they were given this for a certain amount of time, their blood sugar levels were much lower and more easily managed. They're attributing that to the polyphenols, the antioxidants, we talk about those a lot, found in bay leaves. Okay, and then there was another study done. I thought this was interesting. They made cookies where they put ground up bay leaves in the cookies. And they gave these to people with diabetes. And they found that after a certain number of times that they ate these cookies, their blood sugar was lower than the people that didn't get the cookies and the bay leaves. Go figure. It's pretty interesting. Um, I don't think I've ever had a cookie with bay leaves. I was, I was wondering if they were sweet or if they were more of like a biscuit. But anyway, they ate ground bay leaves helped blood sugar control. I thought that was pretty cool. Okay, health benefit number three. Uh, bay leaf extract may help people with kidney stones according to a study that was done in 2014. 
they found that um, the extract along with eight other traditional med medicinal herbs uh, were able to reduce the urease in your body and urease is an enzyme that can cause gastric disorders issues like kidney stones so it was helping it was help helping people to get that back in balance and reduce the incidence of kidney stones <coughs> excuse me uh, number four bay leaves may help with the treatment of seizures there was a study done on animals on on mice um, and they found that these mice had regular seizures and they were given bay leaf extract. It was an Iranian study. And <clears throat> after they were given the extract, seizures were majorly reduced. So they are hoping that maybe this could help people with epilepsy. So more research needs to be done, but that's pretty interesting. Okay. Reason number five, or health benefit number five. Uh, bay leaves may help improve our digestion. That's always good. They have traditionally been found to relieve symptoms of indigestion and other stomach-related issues. There was a study done in 2019 um, where they found that it did help give relief from abdominal pain and other gastrointestinal issues. Let's check this out. See if the water is boiling. Continue to boil for three minutes. Okay, we can do that. Let's turn the. Yeah, that's better. Okay, we don't want it to boil over. Okay, so number six. Bay leaves may help improve our cholesterol levels. That's always a good thing. There was a study done where subjects drank bay leaf tea once a day for 10 days, and afterwards they found that the people that did that had higher HDL levels, which is the good cholesterol, which is the cholesterol that we want to be higher. So their cholesterol levels were improved. Pretty cool. Okay, number seven. Bay leaves may help relieve respiratory conditions. That's always good. They, because of their strong antibacterial properties. Oh boy, the water is boiling. Okay. Let's reduce that. Okay, excuse me. Uh, because of the antibacterial properties, um, there have some, some studies have found that it can help with respiratory conditions, especially if you mix bay leaf extract with a salve and apply it to your chest, kind of like, um, VIX, but a more natural form, um, that it could help relieve um, any issues that you're having in the respiratory department and put it on overnight. Number eight, <laughs> bay leaves may act as an anti-inflammatory agent. Always a good thing. Uh, there have been some studies done that there is a unique phytochemical, so that a, or phytonutrient, which is a compound found in some plants called parthenolide, parthenolide, which can quickly reduce inflammation and irritation when topically applied to areas where there's inflammation, like sore joints, people with arthritis, things like that. Um, and also they have found that it could help with inflammation if you consume it as well, like a bay leaf spice. Last but not least, number nine, uh, bay leaves may help reduce anxiety and stress. I liked that. Linalool, which is a compound found in thyme and basil, is also present in bay leaves. And this compound can help lower stress hormones in the body, especially used as aromatherapy. Super simple. If that can help reduce stress, that would be awesome. 
I would like to try that. Okay, let's see how many minutes. Ooh, we got five seconds. So I have a few more things to talk about, but we're going to check on the water first. The tea. Okay. There we go. Now what does it say? Now remove the pot from heat and let the tea steep for four minutes. Got it. We can do that. <coughs> it smells really good. The cinnamon in it smells really, really good. And the heat on the stove feels really nice too. Okay. Four minutes. Easy. Super, super easy. And delicious. I really can't wait to try this. Something with cinnamon in the cold weather that just makes you feel warm. Okay, so, so now we're going to talk about fresh bay leaves versus dry bay leaves. So fresh bay leaves are typically shiny, green on top, paler green on the underside, and as they start to dry out, the color becomes lighter, more muted. But as it dries, so dried leaves, as it dries, the flavors greatly intensify. And which is why they're more expensive because they're more intense. Um, or no, fresh leaves are more expensive because, you know, they don't last as long um, as the dried. So just something to keep in mind. Speaking of storing and lasting longer. So fresh leaves are best kept wrapped in a paper towel, put in a Ziploc bag in the refrigerator, and that should be able to last one or two weeks. The dried, I found out, um, can last up to two years. I was really surprised. I'm sure I've had bay leaves in my pantry for two years. Uh, but we're using fresh, fresh dried ones today. Fresh in our house, anyway. And you can store these in a just a jar, airtight jar, in the pantry, away from heat and light and all of that. Um, and I found out you can also store the dried bay leaves in the freezer which I love putting things in the freezer. I used to work in nutrition research and we would freeze everything, even things like tortilla chips. I just learned you can freeze so many different things. Now we know you can freeze bay leaves um, and that will help it retain its flavor for longer. So pretty interesting stuff. And that's all I have on the history, the uses, the different types of bay leaves, which who knew that there were so many. So we, this recipe is for West Indian bay leaf, but I'm guessing this is probably a Turkish. We'll find out. I can't wait to try this tea. I feel like it's going to be pretty hot. So maybe I'll just take a tiny taste before the end of the show. But so many good things about the bay leaf. And it's always one of those things that like I have in my cabinet. I don't use a whole lot unless I'm making broth or something. So now I know all these different things you can do with bay leaves, especially tea, especially tea. Okay. Let's see. We have one minute left. So let's do a quick review. Okay. The bay leaf comes also called the laurel leaf comes from the sweet bay tree. It's an evergreen tree shrub. And it originated in the Mediterranean region of the world, but now it's grown in other, other places. And let's see, it's always been a symbol of honor and success, especially in Roman and Greek history. The word baccalaureate comes with that base and also poet laureate, like the laurel leaf. So that's pretty interesting. And you know, often used in soups and stews. Keeping it whole is pretty traditional. If you want to crunch it up, get more flavor, just make sure you put it in like a tea diffuser or a sachet or something so you can remove it more easily. And let's see, the varieties, Turkish, California, Indian, Indonesian, Mexican, and West Indian, all the varieties. Health benefits, oh boy, here we go. Antibacterial, help blood sugar level. We'll come back to that. We'll come back. All right. Now it says strain out the bay leaves and pour in a cup. Okay. So I'm just going to ladle out some of the tea. I thought that would be the easiest way to do this. And pop 
pour it into a mug. Here we go. It's really pretty in the pot too. All right. We will give this a taste. Mmm, it smells really good. I think the cinnamon really does add to it. And it says, you know, you can add a little bit of milk, you can add a little bit of honey or sugar, whatever you like to put in your tea. But I just like mine plain. So we'll try it that way. I was a little nervous it was going to be hot. Oh yeah, that's nice. Really nice. Really subtle. And it'll keep you warm. Okay, quickly, the health benefits. I'm just going to review really fast. Antibacterial properties may help lower blood sugar, may help reduce the incidence of kidney stones, or may prevent them. Uh, may be a treatment for seizures, may improve cholesterol levels, may improve digestion, may help relieve respiratory conditions, may act as an anti-inflammatory, help reduce stress and anxiety, and digestion, help improve digestion too. So, lots of good things, super simple to add this to your soups, stews, make a tea, uh, talk to your doctor if you want to do the extract, things like that. But um, yeah, lots of good stuff. You can buy it fresh, you can buy it dried. The dried are more intense in flavor. Dried, store in the pantry, fresh, store in the refrigerator, or uh, store the dried in the freezer. So, that is it for today. Thank you all for joining the show. See you all next week. Have a great week. Make some bay leaf tea. Let me know how it goes. I'll post a picture of the tea on my Instagram. See you all next time. Okay, bye everybody.